Okay, now that we have a base layer that we think is worth building up on, we only know we have a base layer when every pixel has been chosen behind our subject matter, right? And we're just doing something, an animal or a portrait on a blank white background. So a way to check that is to duplicate your blank white layer that's at 100% and then to fill it with middle gray. And if that changes substantially what you see, then you need to do more work inside your image. Now, for instance, that shows me this white that I painted for the jaw. Maybe on my base painting, I want to select that. I'll just use my magic wand with contiguous turned on so it's not the whites everywhere. So just here and delete it. Right? It doesn't need to be super clean. And then I might like some of the white that's showing up underneath the face other places. Yeah, I don't really need it though, but inside the face. And if I wanted that, what I can do is I can take my shape painting layer, select the empty space with my magic wand and contiguous turned on around it, right? Move that selection onto my blank white layer and then just duplicate it. I have to unlock it to do that. But I have to, so I have to invert the selection first, duplicate it, so that I've got basically a white underpainting just where I want to, to have my image, right? So without that white underpainting, it looks like that. With the white underpainting, it looks like that. Maybe that looks a little bit better. So then I can merge that white underpainting with my base painting layer and now everything looks good on gray and on white and i can even for good measure just like we did for our spot illustrations fill another background with black and it basically shows up on all three even at the edges and that's kind of what you want right and that gives you a lot of versatility i'm going to lock these background layers and I'll probably paint with the middle gray turned on because that helps me see shadows and highlights kind of in equal measure. I'm going to lock these sketch layers. I'm going to lock the base painting layer. And now I make, I'm going to lock my reference layer, which I don't really need anymore. I'm not going to rotoscope anymore. And I have that reference here save my work. Now I'm going to create a new layer and this is going to be my refined paint layer. And refined painting you can do on one layer over your base or you can do it on several layers over your base. Some people like to paint the eyes in one layer and the jewelry in another and the hair in another. Whatever helps you feel like you're being efficient. Right. So for refined painting, I'm not just going to use this same brush, but to be, and this brush is just a standard, you know, hard round pressure size brush at 70% opacity, 100% hardness, size of about 364 pixels. Instead, I want to use a custom brush. And so I can scroll down and see some of these custom brushes. I have dry media brushes. All of these work pretty well. But you'll notice that the hardness and softness is no longer an option. As soon as you have a shaped brush, you lose those features. So instead of trying to go through all the different brush options that are baked into Photoshop, figure out what you want, I want to just teach you how to make your own brush. Because by knowing how to modify it, you'll understand what you can do. And all of these custom brushes you can get online, they're not all that fancy. You know, it's just understanding these settings. So to do that, save your work. We're going to make a new file in Photoshop. This will be for our brush. We are going to make it not in inches. We're going to make it in pixels. And we're going to make it 1,000 by 1,000 pixels. So it's a 1,000 pixel square. Doesn't matter the resolution because it's 1,000 pixels by 1,000 pixels. Then what I want you to do is click on the defaults. So black and white. Black is the foreground. White is the background. You 
click on the defaults just by clicking this little square here. And then I want you to pick a brush to use. You can use a different kind of brush. I download brushes sometimes just to try them out. These are ballpoint ones. And then I want you to kind of fill up the space. We can also just use the standard brush, pressure sensitive though, that we have been using. And how different are those when you actually look at them? It's about the edge quality and about how they, what's called jitter in how opaque they are, right? We're going to be able to set all those things. So if I want it to be like kind of a, a horsehair dry brush, I would make a lot of marks like this at a kind of a 45 degree angle. And if I want it to be kind of a flat brush, maybe kind of a half inch flat painting brush, I'm going to scribble it in this kind of shape where it's narrower at the corners, wider at the middle. And then I'm going to let it overlap the most in the middle. So this is a dry media brush. This will look kind of like dry pastel or just kind of rough painting. All right, so then what do I do to turn this into a brush? I go up to edit and I say define brush preset. Then I can give it a name and I'm going to give it this semester's name. So spring 2023 dash one sample I'll call it dry brush or you can use your name Carl dry brush say okay now that brush is built into Photoshop it's now at the bottom of your options but in a very very basic way so if I set its size down smaller than a thousand this is what it looks like not that exciting because it's locking that brush which if I just hit once, looks like that. That's pretty cool. But as soon as I, it's locked in angle, it's locked in opacity, it's locked in size, it's not size sensitive or uh, pressure sensitive. That's really boring. So instead, check this out. I am going to, here, let's uh, fill it with white. I just erased everything so I can show you what brush settings do. Now that I have this brush selected, if I go to window and I go to brush settings, this is what matters. And the first brush setting, I'm going to keep it really simple, though you can do a deep dive into this if you're interested, is shape dynamics. I always want shape dynamics. The first thing I want is to the control of the shape to be based on pin pressure. That allows me to go thick to thin with my pressure. The next thing in shape dynamics I want is to play with the minimum diameter so it doesn't go to one pixel, right? I know I don't ever want to put down one pixel. My minimum is going to be about 9% of the brush size. So it means it's never going to be too thin no matter how light I put it down, just like a real brush. The only brushes that can go to kind of one pixel wide are like pinstriping brushes, and those are very particular. The next thing I want to play with, this is to me the biggest, is angle jitter. Because we made a brush that was at an angle, that had different sides to it. And you can see in the preview here, as soon as you angle jitter it, it's no longer just locked in one angle. So if I zoom in on that, that's with angle jitter. Look at those edges versus no angle jitter, that. So you want an angle jitter. And then I play with the roundness jitter, which gives it a little bit of difference at the edge still. And then I'm just going to take the opacity down a little bit. And when you do all of that, you get a brush that can give you some pretty nice texture. Now, if you want more texture than just what the opacity can give you, right? you can play with the texture attributes of your brush settings. 
And you can even select a texture that goes into it, and you can build it with more depth or less. I would always put a depth jitter on, and let's see what that looks like. Let's take that brightness down, let's take that contrast down, it's a little sharp. You can use this to even put kind of a subtle canvas texture into your brush. And all of this is going to be a lot more um, satisfying when you zoom up to it than just a standard clean edge brush. You can also play with dual brush, which is where you have it kind of work alongside two different shapes and toggle between. You can play with color dynamics where it toggles between your foreground and background colors all the time, but that gets a little hard to control. You can add noise to the brush. And usually what I'll turn on is smoothing and sometimes wet edges, which give the edge of your brush a slightly more distinct shape as well. All right, but the most important by far, I can turn off all of these except for smoothing and shape dynamics. Because that's kind of what I want. So once you've created a thousand by thousand pixels, like here, I'll just make a new brush using my brush, right? And now this brush is going to be kind of interesting because this brush has different opacities to it. You see it has dark grays, it has light grays. I still want some gaps of white in there. And this is going to be more like a wet brush, you know, more like a uh, synthetic sable half inch flat. If I want it to be around, I can just make it kind of around. And as long as you've got some variation in there, I can throw little dots, you know, at the edges, like it spits as I paint. That will only matter at, at little edges as I'm changing. Okay, so to define it now as a brush, I go to edit and I say define brush preset. And then I have to give it a name. And this will be my Carl wet brush. And then I can select all, delete, fill it with white, take my size down, my opacity down, see what that brush does. It doesn't do much without playing with the shape dynamics. So then I play with the shape dynamics. Size jitter is also can be pretty important. A pin tilt, minimum diameter, tilt scale, angle jitter. Just play with all of these. And then you'll have a brush with a lot more variation. I want to turn on texture. I can choose a texture. I like the water ones to kind of map onto it. And you're going to see that you can even say protect texture. You'll see that as you're painting with different colors, you know, and you can try that. but I just like a basic brush that I can layer up this way and use to mix. I can't control the hardness and softness of the edge because the brush in itself already has hard and soft edges and some different opacities. So what if I take a brush that's multicolored? This will be all just about making brushes. Let's throw some blue in there. It's not going to matter. Your brush is just kind of a stamp of where pixels will go. Right? But it does matter if, like when you go to bitmap mode from color mode, it will matter what's lighter than 50% gray and what's darker than 50% gray. So this is a, a very wet brush. And if I define this brush preset, This would be good for kind of filling in large areas of dark. And I fill it with white, and I take my size down. 
and I play with my shape dynamics. 